How can you invest and make money in today's real estate market? Welcome to the Successful Investor Show, where we talk with successful real estate investors, business owners, and busy professionals on their journey to wealth. They share their best ways and advice to make massive gains in today's market. Make sure you are subscribed so you never miss an episode. Now, here is your host, Doran Nissin. Welcome everyone to the Successful Investor Show, where we talk about how to passively invest and create passive income and generational wealth. I'm your host, Doron Nissim, and I've been investing in real estate for the past 15 years, and I love it. And today I have the pleasure to have Boris Sanchez. Boris, how are you doing, brother? Good, thank you, Doron. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have you here. Boris has been investing in real estate for the past 13 years in real estate commercial real estate and residential real estate and has bought and sold more than $50 million. He owns more than 1,500 units and he actually starting a new mentoring program in July where it's going to teach people how to invest in commercial real estate and uh, how to make money in real estate. So Boris, I'm excited. I want to hear everything about you and tell us how did you start it in real estate? Uh, thank you, Daron. So I started uh, about 13 years ago, or after my uh, uh, my MBA, my master's degree abroad. I came back home and um, I started as a mortgage broker. I did not like residential uh, mortgage brokering, and I tried home flipping. I did not like home flipping. Um, I wanted to make more kind of cash flow, more passive investments, as you say, more more passive cash flow. And uh, I started, you know, investing in commercial real estate. Uh, my first deal was a eight unit apartment complex here in East Houston. Wow, nice. So yeah. after after that eight units, I guess uh, it opened your eyes and you wanted to to buy more and bigger and more profitable properties. Yeah, well, uh, the eight unit apartment complex at first, I was just looking to make a thousand dollars in passive income. Uh, when I started it, and um, I ended up making over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars just out of an on eight flex, wow. which is more money than I've ever seen before. And this is uh, twenty thirteen. Yeah. And so, um, actually, you know, I, you know, I started playing around with the concept of owning my own property, not being passive, and uh, actually doing everything myself with very little partners. Um, and just being creative in the amount uh, or in the uh, way that I borrow and rehab. And then fast forward to now, I'm kind of still doing that with bigger properties. Wow, that's amazing. And that's the power of real estate, I think. You can, you can buy a property without even have money or using other people's money and kind of tapping into equity of the property and leveraging and then ending up doing a bunch of money without doing a, without putting any money of yourself. So, and, and that's the power of real estate. Yes, that is yeah. correct. I love that. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, in all your journey that you started, I guess the first property was a uh, uh, part of it, but was there an aha moment that you said, I want to do, I want to focus on commercial. I want to focus on, on this. And what, what, what led you to, to do this? Uh, I think that the aha moment was when I made, you know, $250,000, my first one. And I made it using about maybe only $10,000 out of my own pockets. Wow. So I used hard money loans, which is normally used for home flipping. And I used it, I was pretty much one of the first ones in Houston to use it commercially with a, uh, with a commercial property such as an eight flex, right? And so I brought only 10000 on the table. And, uh, and yeah, so I ended up making that much money, which is completely insane to me. Um, but it did uh, propose me to just kind of start doing that same thing in bigger and bigger properties more and more often, more uh, throughout the year. And so- Nice, nice. That, yeah, that's fast forward that... to now, I mean, like I said, it's, uh, it, 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 I've been playing around with the same concept. Yes, I've learned a lot of lessons. Um, I've, uh, you know, made a lot of mistakes. I failed, but then the, you know, what matters is that you get up and try again. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of things to learn and a lot of different properties, a lot of different scenarios. But if you learn and you get improved and you, and you keep going, uh, eventually you will get what you want to get, which is bigger properties, more profit. Um, so I wanted to ask you, in all your career, was there a specific property or the best deal that you had that you can tell us about it or things that you learned from it? best deal that I've ever done was probably last year, but then it's on par with what I have right now. So um, I'll tell you two separate examples. One was, was the one I closed last year. It was a uh, portfolio of 167 units across 19 different apartment complexes. Oh. Um, I bought it for 5.5 million and sold it for uh, 10.7 million. Wow. And so I made some pretty good above five uh you know i would say all fees included above uh 4.6 million dollars is what i actually made on that deal alone and i was in the space of about six months wow uh i have another one which is an 100 unit apartment complex that i actually bought in 2020 right before covid for uh 3.6 million dollars um i spent maybe two million dollars on that one and now it's worth eleven and a half million dollars. Wow! So I, I have over um, seven million dollars worth of equity in that one that I'm about to cash out of. Amazing! Those are amazing deals, and those are probably pretty hard to find these days. So what? What? Uh, how did you? How were you able to find them? <laughs> They're not hard to find. You just have to have a little imagination. That's it. Uh, everybody in town had passed on. Uh, the 100 unit apartment complex, everyone just thought it was too expensive, too expensive to build, too much work, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was one of the last ones to actually see that deal. And uh, I just had, you know, I had the imagination and went in and with the right structure financially, with the right structure, with the right team, and I actually got it done. So I don't like saying that I'm elite and I only know about those deals. Those deals are actually everywhere. You just have to look. And you have to have a little bit of imagination and uh, put what you've learned, all, all what you've learned to, to use right. for you. you know? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I want to touch on two points there. One thing is that you have experience, so you knew exactly what you want to do and you had the back of money. I mean, you have the bank or you have your own funds to do the deal. And the second thing is that you uh, went to into your backyard, actually your own city or where you are, and you already know the market, you know what's going to be, so it helps you make the deal work, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, knowledge of, of your market makes the deal work. I mean, I don't think that there's, unless you live in an area that's remote or there really aren't any deals, or maybe you live in an area that doesn't really favor landlords, right? Um, there are plenty of deals in your backyard, plenty of deals to be done, plenty of money to be made. Honestly, it just comes down to how educated are you? Are you going to know the difference between a good deal and a bad deal when the time comes? Don't give yourself excuses talking about uh, the market is bad and it's not the right time to buy. And, you know, he only gets those deals because he's already in the industry. Those are all excuses. You know, you can educate uh, yourself anytime. Uh, and like I always like to say, it's always a good time to buy a good deal. Bye. The only issue is are you prepared you know are you prepared to take it on are you going to know what it looks like all that exactly you need the knowledge and the skills and the experience sometimes you need somebody that's already done that to help you identify and move forward and push yourself to buy that deal yeah Absolutely. so so my next question, um, I mean, were you, uh, did you buy any a bad deal or did you have any bad deal that you can tell us and what you learned from it? Um, the nice thing about commercial is that you can try to turn a good deal, uh, or I'm sorry, a bad deal into a good deal. Um, or just the same, you can turn a bad deal into a really, um, you can turn a good deal into a bad deal as well. Uh, and, right. Uh, you know, it, it, it just matters the tools that you have at your disposal. For example, in commercial real estate, I would say um, it's actually uh, less risky to invest in, in it 
rather than invest in residential because there are so many different exits. In, in residential, for example, you have a house and uh, you only really have three ways out. You can sell it, you can rent it, or you can own or finance it. Um, that's pretty much it. That's the only thing you can do. And any combination of those two uh, maybe are not possible because if you try to sell a house that already has a tenant in it, it's it's not going to work. People want it vacant. If you want to flip a house, then you have to completely turn it in vacant, right? Uh, and so there's uh, it very much limits your options as far as you know what uh, <clears throat> what avenues you could take with that asset. In commercial real estate, you know you could actually turn it into something else. You can lease it out. You can master lease it, right? You can use uh, different types of financing in order to get in, get out. Um, but generally, the rule is it's very easy uh, to uh, sell an apartment, you know, an apartment unit to somebody. So it's uh, virtually easy to rent a, 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 an apartment complex out. Um, and the more that, that it's rented, the more cash flow it's bringing, the more attractive it is going to be for an end investor, right? Right. And so um, have I ever done a bad deal? Uh, I mean, I've bought bad deals before and I turned them into good deals. I've bought good deals that um, I risked a lot because I did not foresee all of the risks. For example, um, I didn't fully check that uh, my insurance was valid or I didn't uh, secure the property, you know, and a lot of vagrants came in and stole stuff. And so have I ever actually lost money on a deal? Fortunately not. I've never done a deal where I've lost I've, I've done a deal where we learned a lot, sure, but we still came out on top because of all the other lessons that we learned from other deals, uh, how to maneuver, how to do this, how to do that, right? When you, when you see yourself at a corner, you have to focus on your exits. You have to focus on where do we do from here? Problem solving is one of the best things ever, right? So if you have the education, if you have the confidence to actually solve a problem, you'll be able to get out of a bad deal. Right. Yeah, I love I love your answer, how you turn a bad deal into a good deal. And uh, yeah, I love that. Usually uh, when you're experienced and you have the money and uh, you can dump resources into a property, you'll be able to make a, good, a bad deal out of a good deal. So um, right. yeah, the next question is for you I have. Um, in today's market, and we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but they're saying that the market is kind of shaky. They don't know, people don't know where it's going to go. So how are you mitigating risk when you go to buy a property? Uh, how am I mitigating risk? Um, I would say my underwriting has to be very, very conservative. I don't believe that I am the super investor, you know? And I don't believe that I have a, I'm a, I'm a superhero with, uh, with uh, a special power that nobody else has, you know? Yeah. I have to be very conservative, look at the market, have to make sure that the rents that I'm, ask, that I'm going to ask for make sense, right? Um, I have to make sure that my financing is in place and I have a good contractor and a good crew and a good manager. Um, so I have to make sure that my underwriting is very precise and um, and and make sure that I have picked a strategy before I jump into a deal, right? Um, and in a strategy that also will allow me to move if the things get bad. Like for example, if uh, if I'm stuck because of permits at the city, right? Um, what will this deal allow me to do if I am stuck? What can I do? What can I not do? What kind of problems can I solve in order to get ahead? Um, that all comes kind of comes back down to the education that I was telling you about. Uh, more, more and more people ask me, what, uh, what can I do with this $10,000? What can I do with that? What can I do with this? And I would always say, hey, look, the very best thing that you can, you can invest in is education. Don't invest in anything else. Don't invest in real estate. Forget real estate until you're actually knowledgeable and uh and, and confident enough so you can solve the problems and so right. that's that's exactly how we we get ahead and uh and, and we and we solve problems in a tough situation 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. Invest in yourself, invest in your education. Make sure that when you go into a deal, you know exactly where you're going to and how are you going to exit it. So that's yeah. that. That's the best uh, way to actually mitigate your risk when going into a deal. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm going to move to the far round of four uh, successful questions for our viewers. Um, so the first one I have for you: What is your three best success habits that you have in your life or your business? Success habits, I would say, uh, being able to be open. Being able to be very, uh, I guess, pliable, very, very confident in that I can solve any issue that uh, any deal will throw my way. Um, I would say also disconnecting yourself because uh, disconnecting for me is very important. For me, the ability to go home and spend time with my family and spend time with, um, you know, my, my kids or, or my wife or whatever, that is very important uh i cannot bring that with me and the reason for that is uh yeah it's great for the family right but the reason the other reason for that is when you come back to it you know the next day or whenever it is you come back refreshed with a fresh mind ready to tackle a problem you know and right. um whether you're waking up at four in the morning or six in the morning and taking a cold plunge or whatever that means you know <laughs> It doesn't matter as much as looking at a problem from a new perspective, right? Um, and and that goes also tied in with the education that I kind of keep on talking about is uh, if if you're kind of if you have a fresh mind and you're educated, you can come back to a problem, and uh, nine times out of ten you'll be able to tackle it. Right. Yeah, I love that, and and I have that uh, I have that experience in myself as well. Sometimes. You have problems, you have issues, and you're too tired to think about that, and you, you live it for the next day, and then you come up with things that you didn't even think about before. So yeah. that, 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 that's a great uh, point to have, definitely. So the next, the next question I have for you is, what is a good resource that you use in your business that you can share with us? A good resource? Um, I would say look at financing methods. This getting educated on and on financing avenues and methods creative financing doesn't get talked about enough and i don't just mean subject to or take over a note or anything like that i mean stuff like master lease with the option of buy or second lien financing or seller financing with a second lien or backseat uh financing i mean uh stuff with like hard money you know bridge financing uh, agency financing all this uh, people just think that it's, it's you know going to commercial is just going to a nearby bank and asking for a loan that is not what you want to do there are very very many avenues um that you can take in order to tackle a uh a a deal um and uh, i just don't hear anybody ever speak on look you should learn you know that creative financing is the key here um in a lot of ways a lot of a lot of different ways you can get into a deal for little money um or 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 no money sometimes and even sometimes very rarely get money at closing you know it depends on your lender it depends on a lot of things it depends on how you structure the <clears throat> things but, uh, but yeah it, it would be my resource i guess my greatest resource would be my ability to know how to skin a cat is how to how to finance a deal awesome yeah i love that because once you look at the deal and you have in your tool belt you have so many ways to finance the deals or structure the deals or creative do something creative with the deals you'll be able to look at the deal in a different eyes if you just look at the deal and think oh i need to bring 20 or 30 or 40 percent from home and i need to go to the bank this doesn't work and i'm not going to buy it so you're actually going to lose a lot of the deals that are out there so if you have that uh, knowledge and skills to have creative uh, financing to think creatively you'll be able to buy much more deals at a better terms and better prices and, and do actually more deals so yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's a great resource and and i'm sure you're going to teach that in your course as well how uh, to create a finance properties 
Uh, definitely, I, I teach. I spend three hours teaching creative financing and just regular financing from uh, commercial properties. And so I spent as, as much time explaining what commercial property is and how to analyze it as much as I spend on uh, how to finance it. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Very important. All right. Great. So the next question I have for you, what is your three tips for people to make money in real estate or in business today? Three tips to make money in real estate. Uh, first, be creative. And I don't mean like just, you know, um, I don't, I don't mean just in financing like we just talked about. Be creative in your strategy, right? Be creative in your rehabbing, how you're going to rehab the property. Be creative. Look at it from a different lens. Is it really a fourplex you're looking at? Maybe you could divide units. Maybe you're looking at an eightplex. Um, the 100-unit apartment complex that I talked about earlier, it was actually uh, originally a 72-unit apartment complex. It started oh. by the um, if you even go beyond apartments to shopping centers, can you reparcel out some property? Can you resell the roof rights? Can you renegotiate leases? Can you, you know, do so many things creatively to a deal and add value like you wouldn't believe? Um, if you're looking at this and knowing exactly how to start or asking yourself exactly how to start, I would say my second one would be add value. Add value to everyone and anything that you see. If you don't have money to get a deal going, I would say train yourself. There's plenty of free education out there. You know, look at Investopedia, look at YouTube, look at all this other stuff that's out there. Um, and train yourself to look at deals and then maybe bring deals to somebody else that, that you want to do business with. Add value to them, right? And before you know it, they will be adding value to you. So don't ask exactly how, how JFK said it in a weird way. Don't ask what they can do for you, right? Ask what, what you can do for them. Right. Um, and so uh, that that is a great way to build wealth is actually to start building value for somebody else, right? And I guess my third one would be... Um, Trust in people, be be transparent. Don't be weird, don't be, uh, you know, don't be shady. Don't try to change your name many times, your oh. email, you know, don't <laughs> yeah, be transparent. Uh, tell everybody exactly what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, what your motivations are. Don't be afraid to be motivated by money, you know? Uh, Motivation for money is one of the best things ever because it's so pure. And yeah, of course, we're just trying to all pay the bills and 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 you know make make ourselves uh, buy more freedom with the money we buy we get right. And so uh, and there's no shame in saying yeah, I'm motivated by money. Uh, I'm not I'm not here to save the whales. I'm here to make you know myself rich, and that's that's okay to say to say to say, and that's it's okay to be motivated by that. Just right. be transparent. Yeah, love those. Love those points. Definitely add value. Know your goals. If it's money, great. Uh, make as much as, as possible. And uh, yeah, and be creative when you look at deals, when you look at anything in your life, be creative. I love those three points and they are very uh, important in anybody's life. Definitely. So my last question for you for today is uh, for people that have a full-time job, uh, but they want to invest in real estate, they want to start to invest in real estate, what is your advice for them? So, I mean, there's really two main avenues that, that people can do, right? If you have a full-time job, um, it depends on where you want to go and it depends on how much time you have. If you don't have a lot of time in the day to mess with your own property, hey, look into investing passively with a syndicator. Look at it. Uh, you know, invest uh, with a joint venture with somebody. You'll provide the money, they provide the legwork. You know, obviously make sure that they're thoroughly vetted and they know what they're doing. Otherwise, you will you can end up with a bad ride, right? Um, and the other avenue would be when you're trying to leave the job and so you're maybe having to make time in order to get your own deals, buy your own deals 100%, not passively invest. And I would say I would, I'm a fan of number two. I've helped a lot of people uh, quit their jobs and then just do, you know, buy their own properties and run their own properties. And um, 
they're they start off being very organized, right? And so they'll find a good team. They'll find a good deal first, right? And they'll find good deals, uh, and they'll get a good team, a good contractor, a good lender, a good manager, stuff like that to help them with the work along while they're at the job. But yes, I uh, I very much commend anybody with a job for looking at real estate. Um, you, I feel like, look, no job out there is secure. You know, no job out there is actually going to give you one hundred percent. Uh, security that you will be in that chair tomorrow. You can't really say that to me. Um, right. Or or next year, you know, uh, that's what I mean by that. And so, um, yeah, start investing in yourself. It's the best thing ever, whether you do it passively or you do it actively. It's, there's no wrong answer. It just comes down to um, time, how much time and dedication you're going to put on to your projects. Yeah, definitely. Invest in yourself, invest in your education. It's going to give you the confidence to invest in real estate or to find a partner or to find a team uh, to invest with them. So um, I wanted to ask you, I mean, two things, uh, last two things. Um, talk about your mentorship and your course uh, that's coming in in July. What, what, what's going to be? What's going to happen? So uh, what we've done is created a bunch of content. Uh, we, we have over uh, we have over 20 hours of content uh, that we filmed and put onto this website. Um, we have quizzes. We have a network of people ready to help each other. You'll have access to me. Ask me questions on a deal. Look at deals together. Um, you know, I, I always put in kind of like my. Uh, my tips and tricks and my advice whenever you do and need something. And so I try to add a lot of value, not just you taking a course, but there is that. And I promise you the things that I talk about, you won't have ever seen anywhere else. And the things that I say are pretty contrarian. Um, and uh, and I, I, out of the 60 plus students that I've had, live from my live events in the past you know they usually pay me ten thousand dollars a person this one's going to be a fraction of that wow. uh, but uh, but they've never been dissatisfied from the very beginning beginner investor that doesn't even know what real estate is to the experienced uh you know home flipper or already somebody that owns commercial they're all satisfied and so yeah come on and uh please send me a message and uh I will get you $250 off from awesome. watching this episode. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. Already having get, getting value here, $250 <laughs> off. <laughs> All right. So if people okay. want to get in touch with you and get that offer or ask you questions, how can they find you? Uh, please send me an email. Um, uh, or actually, yeah, well, I'll give you both the email and the, and the website. So the website for where you sign up is crew c r e u dot online right so it's www.crew c r e u dot online or you can send me an email to boris b o r i s at sanmore s a n m o r e dot com all right that's awesome so here you go guys uh, reach out to boris start learning start investing and i'm sure boris will help you any way he can to get to your next level Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Successful Investor Show. If you're enjoying this podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. That helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us on the next episode of The Successful Investor Show.